we're going to do a little walk and talk and show you. We're going to keep it live if we can. The sidewalks are ripped up. The pavers just tossed about as the rain came roaring through here. The National Weather Service estimates some more than nine inches fell up on the mountain. And this was the chute, the log flume of water that came through this neighborhood. It gets worse. This is the property being pulled from basements here in Plymouth. Once again, to confirm, a James Cooper, the man who showed up here with a gun and police say just started firing off rounds, turned the gun on himself after fatally shooting a Shana Bernie. Let's go ahead and show you again. You saw where the votes are counted. We're going to go this way into the rotunda where members of the public can come out here and watch the returns come in. The director of elections is very thorough here. People out here on 2nd Avenue, yeah, they're dealing with this. Expected all night. Yeah, and Candace, crews are stretched thin as they're responding to the storms that barreled through here at least a half an hour ago. This tree right down at Irving and Gibson is the worst we've seen yet. There are in excess of 5,000 people in the city of Scranton right now without power. This is our first stop. It won't be our last as we continue to assess the damage of these summertime storms. We are learning that a state police trooper responding to the scene of this shootout was grazed in the head by a bullet. His wound is described to be a superficial one. In fact, they say that folks from crime-ridden Chester, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia, were up here to take a look at this state-of-the-art surveillance system that turns one year old today, and they've been watching folks on the streets the whole time using a lens just like this one. Drew and Kenneth, good evening. And at about 15 minutes ago, the jury sent word to Judge Joseph Agello that they were deadlocked. They could not come to a unanimous verdict over life in prison without parole or death by lethal injection. So by state law, the judge then polls the jury one more time. Can you return and come up with a unanimous verdict or do we have to make a decision here in court? And that's what state law says. The judge on the spot sentenced Elvis Riccardi right there to life in prison without parole. Candace, the Poconos have to be the place to get away to. Look, no traffic. That's a good thing. We're at Routes 115 and uh, 940 right here in Blakesley. Oh, it's beautiful. For 6 o'clock, heading into a holiday weekend, can you say no pain on the roadways? It's a good thing we're at a gas station and we have nothing else to talk about. Over here is where we're having some difficulties with the folks who are putting the gas into the tanks. They're looking at a clear $1 higher per gallon average this holiday season. Good evening. And while the sheriff said that Chief Deputy Charles Guarneri was on vacation for at least two weeks, his time card did not show that. And tonight, the I-team continues to ask why. Let's see, why are you calling me? Well, I did call you. you. No, you don't do that, sir. You don't touch this microphone. We're not talking on the radio. Chief Deputy Charles Guarneri was supposed to be on vacation. So why didn't payroll records show that? I'm this showing you black and white yes, here. And, and I'm that. asking for some answers. Yes, sir, I was told that you were not in the office for the last four weeks. And, that's, and, that, and, that, and that is flat out why. But three independent sources claim Guarneri hadn't been in the office for four weeks. Just a day before this interview, Sheriff Michael Savakinas told Eyewitness News Guarneri was on vacation for at least two and a half weeks. But the payroll records tell a different story. He has time available, and he was, he was exercising his time. But a, but a central recording system in the county does not show that. How does the county keep track then? This is ridiculous. Don't you want to do it? But County Commissioners Marianne Petrilla and Steve Urban thought the payroll dispute was anything but ridiculous. For the last eight weeks, it shows that he's been at work and hasn't taken a, a, an hour of sick time, vacation time, or personal time. Would it have shown that if he did? Yes, it would. It would be clear? It would be clear. And yes. this doesn't reflect that? No, it doesn't. It reflects that he's at work every day for the last two months. I think that everybody needs to get on the same page and be accountable to the people of Luzerne County, uh, especially as elected officials. I think it's imperative with everything that's going on in the county that that's what we all work towards striving to do. Sir, where have you been for the last month? The source of the payroll discrepancy, according to Sheriff Savakinas, an accounting glitch. If you count the days, it's less than 12 days. And you so, have records to show that? Absolutely. Against the records that county payroll has? Again. I don't do payroll. I don't I don't do the payroll. I do not do the payroll. I can't answer for why it was done. I give it instructions. Not my fault that they don't follow protocol. I can't answer for why they didn't dock it. You should maybe ask payroll. 
And we did ask payroll. They said it's up to each row officer in the county, in this case the sheriff, to make certain time cards are accurate. Time cards are turned in each week and then internalized in a computer system. There's no going back to change them. Once they're in, they're in. County commissioners have all of this information in front of them, and now the ball is in their court. We're live outside of the Sheriff's Department tonight. I'm Joe Holden, Eyewitness News. Candace and Drew, if you have a lawn chair outside, you're okay. But if you're working with a sofa or a sectional outside on your porch in your yard, then you may soon have to find yourself dragging it to the trash or dragging it back inside. Hazleton City leaders and indoor furniture that's outside. The two no longer mix. Mike Petrilla thinks it's a no-brainer. That's why we have uh, interior furniture and exterior furniture. There's a reason for it. Hazleton City Council passed the ordinance. No indoor furniture to be used on outdoor porches. Too strict? Too tough? How about Melvin Mello? This is his lazy boy. I mean, it's my house. <laughs> I love it because it's something that I, I just don't understand. You know? I mean, it looks comfortable. Is it comfortable? Uh, yes, <laughs> it is. Come here. And Mello's neighbor could care about people and couches and love seats parked on porches. If they want to lay on a couch that smells or has bugs, that's their problem. Councilwoman Karen Cabell introduced the ordinance. It's based on a law in Bloomsburg, and she says it has nothing to do with sprucing up people's porches. This is about safety and infestations, she says. Would they want their children to play on that same sofa that maybe a squirrel has its nest built underneath or, or rodents or, or bed bugs or something like that? But to her right, Councilwoman Evelyn Graham is someone who has indoor furniture outside. And it is totally free of bugs or anything else. I don't know what people are fussing about. And Tony Cruz with his inside furniture outside agrees. That, that chair there, I, I don't, I don't bother nobody except when they keep it clean. Got to keep it clean? Yeah. yeah. Got to keep it clean. It, it's a mess. Everything to the garbage. I got to tell you, this is really a talking point out here on the streets of Hazelden tonight. No matter where we pulled up, number one, people knew about the story and they knew that if they had inside furniture outside, they may soon have to do what Tony Cruz just suggested there, either take it to the trash or move it back inside. Mayor Barletta's signature has to appear on this to officially become law. We're live in Hazleton. I'm Joe Holden, Eyewitness News. True, and tonight New York is a city full of emotion. A lot of relief around here that Osama bin Laden has been killed. But there is raw emotion, still fresh, still lingering from 9-11. People swell to ground zero all day Monday. The former Twin Towers site, its buildings were brought to the ground by Al-Qaeda mastermind Osama bin Laden. There was dancing and music. And the rest of you terrorists, we're coming for you. And chanting. We are Americanos. And in a truly, albeit loud, display of patriotism. <laughs> This car blared the national anthem, making lap after lap around ground zero. Earlier relatives of 9-11 victims could only imagine. And they did. I think Marv would be ecstatic today. I think he'd be in a bar having a Jack Daniels and Coke and toasting everybody. Luis Ramirez of Jersey City brought the camera, like thousands of others, to hopefully remember this scene. The early days of May 2011. All the while, they remember a day 10 years ago. Feels like, you know, like there's a lot of people here again, and, you know, you have securities high again, which is understandably so. Viana Nader brought flowers and a single balloon. For her, this is a solemn gravesite. And bin Laden, the man responsible, she says, is now in his grave. It's like, finally, we found this guy who was 6'4", 6'2", and on dialysis, who you thought we would have been able to find months after this attack. And it's been nine and a half years later, and finally, finally, we found this guy. I feel a sense of closure. Riley and Piper Avons sat quietly holding this flag of honor, a piece of cloth with thousands of names. They say hundreds have stopped to search their flag. It's very chilling, yeah. They call the death of bin Laden. Mission accomplished, like, you know, we went and accomplished what we needed to. Back live and beyond the sea of satellite and live trucks is ground zero. Of course, the focus tonight is intense. 
It is expected to intensify on Thursday when President Obama visits this area. That's the very latest. We're live from Ground Zero, Lower Manhattan, New York City. I'm Jill Holden, Eyewitness News.